Uh, okay, so, like, uh, full disclosure, I don't actually know how to do this kind of thing. Uh, I've never had to do a video with, uh, voiceover, and I guess I still technically don't have to, but, uh, I would like to, so here's this. If you like Omori AUs, then I have one of them. <laughs> so, uh, before I get too far into it, I need to mention that I drew uh, basically this entire first image sideways, and there you just saw me flip it in post. But I call this AU the Chrysanthemum AU for a variety of reasons. Uh, not just because chrysanthemums are uh, funeral flowers in various different cultures. They're seen as more positive in some, while more negative in others. But uh, as this is a swap-ish AU, I figured that uh, with Basil in this protagonist place, chrysanthemums would make sense. That also brings me to the fact that the Omori equivalent is named Chris, as in Chrysanthemum, uh, which, oh well, sorry, it's similar to another uh, flat-faced indie game protagonist. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, uh, Basil and Sunny are not the same person, and Basil doesn't deal with things in the same way as Sunny, and Chris is inherently kind of aggressive, I guess you could say. Very under a layer of repression, but very aggressive. Chris exists instead of Omori at all because uh, they investigate Mari's death for two seconds and realize that she was killed by asphyxiation, which is normal for a suicide, but... Uh, when Sunny and Basil thought she was already dead, it causes some issues, because it means that Basil killed her and not Sunny. <laughs> and so that's how you end up with Basil being the one with a headspace and all of that kind of stuff, because he feels so much guilt for uh, directly causing Mari's death in this case, which sucks. It sucks. It's bad. It's not fun. Um, and that is this first image talked about. <laughs> now, before we get too deep into this one, I'm gonna give you a strobe warning because I switch between layers a lot in this clip. As I mentioned before, this is like a kind of swap AU wherein some of the characters swap roles, obviously Sunny and Basil do, but it's not all of them, and not always directly, because, well, Mari's still dead, and the world moves on, you know? So in this AU, Sunny's sketchbook plays much the same role as Basil's photo album does in the original story. It was something that started as a way to pass the time, but all their friends kept encouraging it until a good majority of the pages were filled with cartoony little doodles of their lives, their friendships, and what they mean to each other. Pins have been snatched to scribble hearts and stars, little messages hiding between the sketches. And in general, Sunny is very important in this AU, because Basil didn't kill his sister, he killed his best friend's sister. He wasn't close with Mari in the same way as he was with Sunny, and it shows in everything. Even just the fact that Sunny himself has an entirely different color palette than the rest of the Headspace friends. He's completely highlighted. Because Basil regrets killing Mari, sure, but he might just regret the look Sunny gave him when he realized more. True to form, the Headspace cast is represented by the flower that Basil describes them with. I did want to be at least a, a little more creative than just sticking flowers in their hair, though. Mari uses two flowers, not that you can see it very well here. Uh, the first is much more visible in this drawing. She has a white egret orchid in her hair, which uh, I realize is contrary to what I was just saying, but she also wears an apron. She has an apron that has Lily of the Valley patterning on it. You just can't see it in this. Next up, Hiro has rose vines on his outfit instead of stripes. 
I initially wanted to draw actual roses on them, but the complexity of that design would always make them look really cluttered in drafts, so I ditched it. To still bring an image of roses to mind, though, his color is pink with a little bit of flowery lace. Kel, I didn't know what to do with Kel at first until I realized, aha! Kel uses a ball and fights and is someone I feel like would wear graphic tees. So, uh, the round cactus. I also gave Kel a, like, baseball cut top to go under the shirt. It felt, like, sporty to me. I pulled Aubrey's hair back because she uses a shovel in this AU and it makes digging less of a nightmare. But I also threw two gladioluses in her hair to invoke the image of bunny ears, which I think is very cute. <laughs> I'm about out of time on this one, but Sunny's got a tulip brooch on. He's also in the familiar sweater vest and button-up outfit, but with an additional oversized bow tie to put the brooch on. I just think overall it makes him look very sweet and cute, which I like a lot. <laughs> Chris has the chrysanthemum, obviously, but I also try to keep his expression, like, vaguely aggressive while still being flat. I just think it adds this extra layer of intention with his character, even if it's not entirely recognizable at first. Other than that, Headspace is painted in plant imagery. Nothing here makes it very obvious, but like the playground is made of oversized flora, and a lot of the areas in the original Headspace are entirely changed to fit the AU better. There are also different characters that replace old ones, like a character named Daisy Bell who looks kinda similar to Polly and is the boss in the area instead of the debt sharks. Another kinda silly thing in this AU that I don't know where else to mention is the fact that Stranger exists uh, not exactly in the same way as they do in Amori, but it's still a uh, spooky basil. There's also a Stranger equivalent to Sunny, but they're like different. Their name is something else, and they very much resemble something more than Stranger, for a lot of the reasons I've mentioned before with Sunny and Basil. But uh, yeah, that's the Headspace gang. They're all pretty fun, and like, uh, we're just gonna sit here and let us all have one last look at them before we go on to the last part of this all, the real world. And here we are, in the final stretch. My main ideology when designing the characters of the Seiyu was that everything was similar, but not the same. Because Basil and Sunny are similar characters, but they certainly aren't identical. Now, to describe the real world cast. Eagle-eared listeners might have caught on to the fact that I avoided using pronouns in Kel's headspace section. This is because real world Kel is non-binary. Kel's design was already androgynous, but my goal was to really push that further. Uh, I pulled their hair back and gave them a letterman jacket, which you'll see me fudge with its colors later. I also slightly modify the length of their socks and the symbol on their shirt. Aubrey retains the updo she's given in headspace. Her headband also has a longer, floppier bow to keep the bunny ear motif. Other than that, her jacket is given slightly longer sleeves, and its secondary color is changed to purple, to honor Mari in a way. I also gave her the null symbol on her top, because I feel it represents her character pretty nicely. At this point, she also ditches the colored contact, so her eyes are brown. Uh, alas, I uh, probably have the least to say about Hero. He's not a simple character, really, but I don't think much needs to be done to his design here. I pierce his ears and give him gray slacks instead of khakis because my god, why do so many characters in this game wear khakis? Despite the fact that I believe the real world sections occur in the summer, Basil wears long sleeves and long pants. He's got on a white button-up with a green sweater and khaki pants. Ugh, khakis. Other than that, and my vendetta against khakis, I give him freckles, even though he hasn't seen the sun in four years, a bandage on his cheek, and a single wilting flower petal in his hair. Speaking of his hair, I also make it just slightly longer and more unkempt than it is in the original game. Now, this AU is like, kind of, a swap AU, and what I mean by that is that some things stay consistent, but others very much don't. 
Like how Aubrey is still the one being hugged here, she's still kind of a punk. There's no role reversal where it's suddenly Kel instead. But then Aubrey is also the one to get Basil out of the house uh, by uh, throwing a rock through his window and half threatening, half begging him to. <laughs> Basil also doesn't stab her, or Kel for that matter. Instead, he pops Kel's basketball because Aubrey taunts them and Basil gets caught in the crossfire. This upsets Kel, and so Basil promptly tries to flee, instead running basically face first into Sunny. They stare at each other for a while after that, both unable to look away, until Sunny catches sight of Aubrey and darts off without saying a word. Not that Basil says anything, either. Aubrey confiscates his garden shears, despite her owning a serrated shovel that she threatens to beat people with and his quiet protests, and Kel turns away, loudly announcing that they're going after Sunny as they saw him pass. Sunny is still moving away, but the countdown means something slightly different for Basil than it does for him. Something that he's been planning to do for a long time now. And as the speed paint finishes up, that's a wrap, and a little look into the AU. Thank you so much for watching if you've done so. I hope you enjoyed, because I enjoyed making it.